Hi folks. We love our Okamoto surface grinder with one major exception that we, we need to fix and change, which is the little anemic guard that doesn't do much at all to stop coolant splashing out, at least when you're grinding any parts of any sidewall where the coolant splashes up against it and comes over the side of the machine. Uh, the machine does have an option for a full enclosure. It is $11,550 and uh, a six month lead time for not only the enclosure, but the whole machine because it becomes a custom build from Japan instead of us buying one of the floor machines uh, or inventory machines here in the US. So that wasn't happening, but not an uncommon problem on grinders. And here's the funny thing. I, I did not intend to do this myself. And we're gonna actually see today if my idea works. What I intended to do was some CAD work and by CAD, I mean cardboard aided design simply to show somebody on Upwork what we wanted out of this because this is one of those design areas where I suck at. I'm just not imaginative and creative and I miss stuff that's obvious on, on how to do stuff. Uh, and it's just kind of grooms when I talk about this all the time on the podcast, just not something I should be doing these days. But I cut out a little piece of cardboard here and a little piece here. And then I realized, wait a minute here, if I had a rail, um, I think that would be what I'd want the designer to incorporate. And then I found a $40 linear rail uh, on Amazon. It's almost perfect. The only thing I don't love is that these have a little bit of angular tilt to it, but I think I probably have an idea for that as well. And then I realized, hey, I think this works. I know the sizes, the shapes that I want. I started to think about doing the acrylic myself, and then I thought, no, 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 no. Uh, ironically, the laser now takes the place of, our, or the grinder now takes the place of our old boss CO2 laser, which was great, but we need a grinder. And so I uh, ordered three pieces of plastic off Send Cut Send. They just showed up and this is either going to work and be awesome, which we'll find out today, or it's going to be a really good starting off point to kick this off to somebody who can work their magic and give us a pretty good design, order some parts, and we'll take it from there. I would recorded some footage. I didn't like it, so I'm starting over. One of the things I did show on that was these are some 3D printed clips. They've got a little bit of flex. Oh, well, that one fell off too. That was going to be the point of my comment here. I am not sitting here advocating for hot glue necessarily, but it works really good as a easy, cheap, fast way to figure out if this is going to work. And they're, well, again, two for over two here. They're stronger than you'd think. This one fell off on the old video, which I don't need to show you that. Those just fell off. But that one only fell off in the old video because I hadn't uh, cleaned the surface and you really can't have any oil on it. So cleaning it and then some alcohol wipes seems to do the trick. And I actually do think this is going to work at least for now. And then the other big design trick I was trying to figure out was how to mount the rail inside of here without drilling or adding any, any holes at least yet or doing things like two-part epoxies. And I think we've got an idea that's gonna make use of the existing tapped and threaded holes. I already removed a fastener right there. So let's dive in. So for what it's worth, these are holding pretty darn well. So I actually think the uh, two guys over here just didn't have them cleaned correctly. So I'll redo those here in a minute, um, but let's tackle what I idea is on this linear rail. Sheet here will be kind of semi-permanently clipped in slide that in kind of a snug fit just like so i will probably do something additional to restrain that or constrain that but certainly for now um, that's okay and what i did on these 3d printed parts on uh, modeled up of up in fusion that acts as a small flexure to give it some give and then just a little dimple in the middle uh, that way you're just kind of pressing on that point and i don't need to worry about having absolute perfect tolerances I want our linear rail to sit somewhere about right here. And on top of the trucks, uh, I 3D printed a part and I have a quarter inch hole with a hex cutaway for a quarter inch uh, nut. It'll set right here. And the send cut send main acrylic piece has two holes laser cut in it to align up with that. So the question that I had been pondering was um, hot glue is not a great way to secure this in. It would work temporarily, but Part of the problem is the hot glue that we have cures too quickly. It gets cool or, or sets too quickly to get a strip across that 40 or no thousand, yes, yeah, 40 inch uh, rail. They actually make some industrial hot glues that are slower to cool, which are great. And this is the one thing I will shout out. Having a cordless hot glue gun and buying legitimate hot glue stuff is a, is a great trick for the shop. But again, not, not gonna work here. So this is what I've come up with. Got a little 3D printed widget. It's got the angle built into it, which I which I use my grandpa's old uh, old school angle finder to give us that 17 degree angle. And, 
we're going to replace the button head cap screws with the socket head cap screws that are in a slot. The slot just meant I didn't really have to spend much time measuring um, how to line these up. And these printed parts have a little dimple on them that lines up with the holes that are already in the linear rail. Second one like so. And uh, fail fast, fail cheap. If this all works out, I'm gonna have to get a shorter screw for that one. If this all works out, then I will probably do some, I might reprint these to, I wanna minimize the amount of cleaning and buildup of chips. So I might reprint these with flow off surfaces or put some silicone in there to minimize um, any coolant getting down through there. But uh, this is working great so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, so that's the one thing I don't love that I will have to address. Okay. There, the chances catches on that. Okay, certainly not a new hack or anything we came up with, but 3D printing threads is usually not great. So 3D printing a hex, sliding an actual metal fastener in there um, tends to work great except when the nut falls out the back. I went with acrylic. I considered Lexan, but there's not, I'm not looking for the safety aspect of Lexan here. And I believe Lexan scratches more easily. And the acrylic was cheaper and it's kind of, again, fail fast, fail cheap if I need a Lexan order easy to reorder it in a different material that seems great and it's not even catching semi moment of truth here obviously i've not pulled the protective covering yet off the acrylic kind of a temporary handle idea maybe permanent so pretend this is clear. Um, we grind, we've got pretty good overlap protection, etc. And when we're done, uh, okay, so I do want to, I do need to work on that angular alignment because it's tipping forward, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it'll catch a door hook. Actually, it's the hook from the, uh, it's the hook that supports the splash guard. <laughs> Could just actually unscrew it. That's the easiest thing if I'm not gonna use that thing. Um, so consider that solved. So that actually should work. Yeah, now the trade-off is how far open do we want it? We are hitting the limit as the curvature of that. For what we're doing, I think this will be fine. Certainly gonna stop the coolant if you looked at where it's arcing up. Coolant really doesn't seem to hit much higher than this. There you go. Couple things I want to fix. Uh, some a little bit of interference still on that one block. That's actually pretty easy to. I can even take it out for now. Okay. Well, the real test is. It doesn't work. It's actually not a production puck chuck. Just a test one. I still like to stone everything uh, before I put it on the machine table, though. Turn the magnet on. jog it down a little bit. Okay, so. Start the motion. I don't have it traversing in Z technically uh, on a grinder, although most of us machinists would think of it as Y. I just have it going back and forth, but turn the coolant on. And more importantly, turn the coolant on with, with more pressure. Yeah. 
Okay, problem. I'll have to seal. A major problem, but easily fixable, is running down that seam. Good morning, it's the next day. You obviously saw the sort of failure, if you will, of the coolant leaking along there. And I had thought about various options of um, like weather stripping, gasketing, caulking, RTV, et cetera. And luckily it's kind of one of those things where you're uh, better off sleeping on it and, and uh, th keeping it simple, which is a great outcome, I think. I was able to use a pry bar and bend that tab back just, I mean, 50 thou, or a hundred, you know, a tenth of an inch, something, very small amount. Um, that was the tab that previously retained the factory stainless steel guard. And by bending that back, our piece of acrylic will fit inside that slot uh, quite well. And obviously having it on the inside of that trough solves our problems. Had I done that, realized that prior to, I probably could have ordered the plastic slightly shorter, but we're, we've got this here. So what we're gonna do is 3D print some tabs that'll get glued on the inside and hold that in right there. And it's actually nice because it's slightly spring loaded by bending it back out like this, which will um, help keep it uh, kind of in place and, and from vibrating. So basically it's a win around all good news. Um, ironically, we have somewhat of a problem that doubles as also kind of good validation, which is now we've got to get uh, these, some of these plastic prints, uh, printed parts off the hot, the hot glue that we hot glued on. And I think it's a good example of showing um, just how strong this stuff can be. That broke off before it went off like that. These are actually our uh, Nipex. I didn't have the smooth ones handy, so I put some duct tape or electrical tape around these. We use these when we're picking the parts off. There you go. I mean, that took a lot of effort to get off. So I think it's a pretty good validation of how strong the hot glue can be. I wanna reuse this clip design, including the larger surface area for the glue, but I wanna trim this tab down so we don't see as much of it. So P for project. I'll project this plane and extend a line down here. E for extrude, extrude this back. We'll call it that amount. And do I have a plane? Uh, sometimes I don't, on quick stuff like this, I don't even worry if I don't, I'll just construct mid plane. On long-term designs, you want to avoid extra construction stuff for good CAD etiquette, but again, here I don't care. S mirror, I'm gonna mirror the feature I just did, which is the extrude across that new plane to keep it symmetrical and even trim this down a smidge, negative 0.5. Then S fill it, make it look a little nicer. So you should really only see this little part here and let's slice it. Love it, that's great. <laughs> yep, I haven't moved it since yesterday. So we should be able to start the motion. Cooling on. Yeah, I think that's a win. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.